Hey Siri, can you play You Don't Always Get What You Want by the Rolling Stones? Today we're talking about watches that I absolutely love, but I would never buy. These are ones I tried on and they weren't quite right, or maybe I love them but there's just this one teeny tiny minuscule petty gripe that I just can't get past. But this is the thing with being into watches. There will be watches that you love and respect, but they don't work for you for whatever reason. So let's talk about my five watches that I love, but I won't ever buy. Okay, number one, and this is a relative newcomer to the world of watches. So the Octo Finissimo collection was first launched in 2014, and it has made quite the mark on watchmaking in a really short window of time. In those nine years, it has broken seven records for ultra-thin watches, including the world's thinnest tourbillon, tourbillon chronograph, minute repeater, perpetual calendar, and more. And for me, at least, these accomplishments have caused me to see Bulgari as a serious player in high-end watchmaking. The Octo Finissimo has such interesting origins as well. So this is a Genta design, but it was acquired through quite different means. In 1999, Gerald Genta sold the Genta brand and intellectual property to a distributor in Singapore, who then, in that same year, sold those rights to Bulgari. So the Octo Finissimo, as we know it today, took shape during the Bulgari acquisition. And you can see some very classic Genta design cues. I love this watch. The design language feels almost architectural and industrial and elegant all at the same time. So why won't you buy it then, Brittany? Good question, and it just sits so awkwardly on my wrist. I've never been able to make this watch look right on my wrist. I've tried this watch on a few times, different sizes. It's, it's never looked right. I think this one does ultimately suit a larger wrist and not awkwardly small wrists like mine. And I always say, and I think this one is the perfect example of this, it doesn't matter how great the specs are, how cool the movement is, if it doesn't look right on the wrist what's the point? The Vacheron Constantin Agerie. I bet you, you did not see this one coming. <laughs> so this is a dress watch from the Vacheron Women's Catalog, and it might be one of my favorite women's watches. I love the design, the numerals. I just think it looks so fluid and pretty. Ah, oh, it's perfect. One of the first watches I ever really liked when I was first getting into watches was the JLC Rendezvous. And this one has those kind of similar vibes, almost like the Rendezvous Refined. I don't think it's fair for me to say I'll never own this watch, but I have no desire to own it as it is today, because there's no variation without diamonds. If I could buy this exact model, the 35mm Asia Re self-winding, without the hot pink strap as well. I don't have anything against hot pink, it's just my skin is already pink, so it just kind of makes me look more pink. Uh, that's neither here nor there. If I could buy this watch, no pink strap, no diamonds, game over. But as it is today, I'm, I'm just not a diamond person. So something I don't talk a lot about on here is how much I like the Sky Dweller. I haven't always had a thing for it, but a couple of years ago, my friend James at Watch Lifestyle Wales on Instagram let me borrow his black dial Sky Dweller and it completely changed my mind about this watch. I think this is just the most Rolex interpretation of the annual calendar. Sporty, a bit busy, but not too busy. And it doesn't look like any other annual calendar I've ever seen before. <laughs> This watch has the Rolex patented command bezel, which has three positions. For this to the left sets the time and the GMT time. One click to the right is the independent hour hand. And one more click to the right sets the date. The red dot on the dial displays the month with the corresponding hours hand. So for example, if it's September, the ninth month, the red dot will be over the nine. Anyways, my big problem with this watch and the reason I'll never buy it is the size. It is, it's, it's absolutely massive. With a case size of 42 millimeters, which feels a little bit more like 43 millimeters, and a thickness of 14 mil. Forget about it. That's comedically huge on me. Now this is one that I'm in two minds about. So I've tried on the Luminor Due before, and I loved it. I loved the way it looked on my wrist. The 38 millimeter variation, this was the first Panerai I really fell in love with. 
It didn't look or feel like anything I'd ever worn before. It was like the refined version of a Panerai watch. It had all those Panerai signatures with the cushion case, big dial, and the crown protector, but in a much smaller and more compact case at only 4.2 millimeters thick. But here's the problem. Even though it has all those sporty Panerai features, it only has 30 meters of water resistance. So it's a dress watch made to look like a Panerai tool watch. It's kind of the watch equivalent of wearing fake glasses to look smarter. But to be fair, I don't think we can disqualify this one from being added to my collection quite yet. Even though it is the watch equivalent of wearing fake glasses, I can't stop thinking about it. So if ever I buy this thing, I fully expect everyone to tease me in the comment section, but it's not fully out of the cards for me. Okay, last watch on this list, and this is a watch that is completely out of the cards for me, the Omega Plo Prof. This is a watch I feel I can only describe as being outrageous. <laughs> Everything about this watch is outrageous. So in 1970, Omega launched this bold, large watch for serious divers, and it still looks largely the same today. Crown at nine o'clock under the protected case, 4,000 meters of water resistance, grade five titanium, and the titanium shark proof mesh bracelet. So you can really show those sharks who's boss. Or alternatively, you can wear it during shark week and know while you're watching the TV, that shark could never bite you in that very specific location where your mesh bracelet was covering. <laughs> I think this watch is outrageous and ludicrous and I love it. But with a case size of 48 millimeters and a thickness of 18.3 mil, there's no way. <laughs> Actually, it's not even the case size that ruins it for me. The case size has to be measured from lug to lug because of how it's designed. And a 48 millimeter lug to lug isn't the end of the world. But 18.3 millimeters thick, you need to have a certain wrist presence to carry that off. And I just don't have it. But if they ever made a ladies plo prof, I think that would be awesome. Anyways, guys, those are just some of the watches that I personally love, but I know I won't ever buy. I'd love to know in those comments down below if you have any watches that you love, but for some reason or another, you don't ever see yourself buying. Comment it down below. Do all those things to feed the algorithm gods. And stay tuned for me to make some serious apologies to two patrons. Okay, hello. This is the part of the video where I always thank my Pope tier patrons, all tier patrons, who are, it's a fact, the greatest humans in the world. But I've recently made two giant mistakes. So number one, watch Hightower, my beloved friend Luke. Um, he hasn't been on the Pope tier thank you screen for the past couple videos i think it was actually just the past one video because i made a mistake editing i'm so sorry please forgive me you've been such an amazing patron and i'd never want to do anything to upset you but, uh, all, it all just only came down to editing incompetencies i'm sorry luke and i have another apology to make to the nightman <laughs> You upgraded to Pope tier patron. I'm a dum-dum who didn't clock it. So I've not put you on the end screen, which is completely my mistake and I'm so sorry. I ask you both for your forgiveness and I'll be saying 50 Hans Vilsdorfs in, in penance for my sins. Thank you all tier patrons. Thank you Pope tier patrons. Have a great week guys.